Welcome back to Behind the Screens, a weekly movies talk show with a new guest each week. And I'm so excited because this week I have my lifelong crush, Sean William Scott, in the building. Thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. This is my first time meeting you, but it's not your first time meeting E.T. I have something to show you. The alien? <laughs> the, yeah, the alien. Okay. <laughs> Wait, where did we meet the first time around? Show me. This was in 1999 at oh. the premiere of... American, American Pie. Oh, God. Yes. Let's watch this. Are yeah. you guys ready to, to really break out? You know, I think that was the beauty of this movie is that because everybody was kind of like unknowns, people could relate more. I mean, like everybody knew a stippler in their high school. That was my, that was like my goal. And everybody knew like a gym. And I think uh, that'll probably like create a lot more doors or open a lot more doors for actors that aren't, you know, and, like stars, stuff like that. But for me, this is like a dream come true being here and my girlfriend back there. And like, it's just, it's been a great night. That's amazing. Who was your girlfriend back then? Yeah. Who was she? Yeah. I don't think she wants me to admit it. <laughs> <You> <laughs> She's like, to, I dated that premiere. jerk off. Um, That's amazing. Yeah. That's so sweet to see that played back. It's funny because wow. the question, too, was like... Something simple and no, I just went was, on and no, on. No, it was like everybody in this movie is relatively unknown. Like... Yeah. How do you sell a movie like this? And now every single person that's in American Buy... Like, yeah. there's not a single person in that movie that isn't, like, that's still huge. A, huge like moment i've never seen that clip really? you know and just to see that i mean that was i mean that was a dream come true and to be at a premiere what was weird is that uh so that was at universal studios mm -hmm. and um to get to the theater i had to walk by this store that i used to work at called scientific revolution where i sold like glow-in-the-dark stars and bill nye the science guy puzzles and oh stuff and that was only a year before i got american pie so here I am walking to the premiere, walking by this store that I used to work at. And it was pretty... Waving to them, being like, hey guys, see no. you. <laughs> that, was, that wasn't that big of a dick. <laughs> <They're> like, Bye. <laughs> no, I, don't, I didn't do that, but yeah, it was pretty cool. How do you gotta be so insensitive all the time? What? At that time, I remember it was like teen movies. There was like a whole teen movie craze mm -hmm. and teen comedies too. Yeah. And, um, I mean, if, if there had never been this kind of resurgence of those movies, I would never have a career. A lot of actors went. Like now, they don't even really make comedies. No, they don't. You know, like if I pursued acting now, um, it would be really, really hard because they just don't, they don't make that many movies anymore. Yeah, but, uh, but Goon, we're here to talk about the sequel, Last of the Enforcers. But yes, Goon is nice your, segue. Goon is your top-rated film. That's like your... Well, that's not saying much. Most of the movies that I've done... Don't get good reviews. That's because they're that's the because comedies. that's because they're comedies. They don't, comedies typically don't get you know good reviews. Yeah. Which I, I really I, you don't make comedies really for critics, right? You just want to make no. people laugh. But yeah. Adam Sandler wouldn't be working if comedies were for critics. Yeah, you you make whatever you, you feel like is going to be funny. And yeah, you're right though. Like the first goon, I remember one of my family members was like, dude. Goon's getting, like, good reviews. That's a new one for you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> so I remember, like, reading. I was like, oh, my God. This movie is getting really good reviews. You know, yeah. it was really... And people liked the movie so much. I remember just walking around New York and people stopping me and telling me they liked the movie a lot. So when we were thinking about doing the sequel, for me, it was like, let's not kill everybody's love for the first one. Let's do a, a good sequel, hopefully great. Yeah. I think we did. I mean, that's what, that's what I was wondering, too, because that has, Goon has such a cult following, too. And it's yeah. kind of like one of those, like, oh, I didn't know this was going to be such a lightning-in-the-bottle thing. So when it came to the sequel getting pitched to you, what was it about it that you were like, yeah, absolutely going to do this? And was there any hesitance to do that? Yeah, I, I, well, I was nervous about doing a sequel because there, I mean, how many Godfather 2s are there out there? You know, like, typically sequels can actually kill anything that you really loved about the first movie so i i didn't think the the first movie lent itself to doing another one but jay baruchel who wrote co-wrote and, and he directed the second movie he told me the idea and mm -hmm. i really liked it i thought like the idea basically for the most part was to catch up with my character and, and a lot of the the teammates um like six years later and you know my character is married now and he's about to become a father and and then seeing all of the other guys on the team older and like not as good and having to really you know deal with the reality of what life is going to be like when hockey's over and if that's all taken away from you and how do you transition into a different kind of day-to-day -day life and i thought oh, you know what 
if we can make it funny, but right. it has that at its core, like I liked it a lot. Yeah, um, I don't know if this is like a hot take or anything. I I actually liked it better than the first you did? one. I did. Yeah, that's awesome. I think it's really funny. Like right off the bat, like T.J. Miller's in it now. It's so He's funny great, right yeah. off the bat. I'm surprised that Jay hadn't gotten behind the camera sooner because I yeah. feel like he is such. He's been collaborating with so many people for so many years. I'm surprised it took him this long to for this to be his like big feature directorial debut. It's true, especially because he's always wanted to direct, and yeah. he's so bright. And, and uh, yeah, I don't know why, to be honest, because I'm glad it took him this long because I got to be in his first movie. Right. And the whole time I was, I think, you know, any any of the actors that worked with him on the movie, they, you know, that we all think that like felt really lucky to be in his first film, and he's he's great do you see yourself continuing to collab with him and has that conversation happened at all yeah i tell jay i t send him a text all the time like please keep me in mind for your films because yeah. he's just yeah he's become a very close friend and uh i he's he's just great so i'm hoping to you know try to sneak my way into his other movies make me your muse yeah exactly <laughs> make me your muse yeah but i i mean also with goon if people like if the audience really liked it you know the sequel. Mm -hmm. It would be so fun to keep working with all the guys again and right. find a way to keep telling stories. I mean, even if it was like a Netflix series and we focused on like every episode, you know, on the, on a teammate. That'd be know, cool. That could be fun. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Pitching it right now. Netflix. <laughs> We're doing it. You guys watching? Yeah. Do you ever accidentally get punched in the face on set? Because I feel like I would. No, I accidentally punched some of the guys. Did you? Yeah, I felt terrible. The, I think the very in the sequel, the, the very first fight that we shot, first take, I clocked one of the stunt guys, and I was like, "Dude, I'm an asshole." And he's <laughs> like, "Trust me, I've been punched harder." I was like, "It's not very nice." <laughs> but yeah, it's funny though. But you know what? My thing is it has nothing to do with the movie. I walk into stuff all the time, every day, in just real life. Mm -hmm. I always hit my head. I walk in, something hits my head every day. What about you? Um, I have wardrobe malfunctions constantly. Like how? Um, there have been two weddings back to back that I've gone to where something's gone horribly wrong in front of a lot of guests. Can you tell us? Sure. I don't think my, I don't think anybody cares, but I will tell, I will tell you after. Okay. Because, uh, yeah, it's a thing. Okay, so you got your thing. We all have we things. All have our th we all have our things. Yeah, okay. When I'm reading interviews with you or watching interviews with you, it's like people always ask you if you think you're typecast. And that it's a, that's an annoying question to me because I feel like yeah. as many people probably approach you daily with something different every time. What do you think is like, what's the most common one that people say to you? Well, that, I get that question because I pretty much played the same kind of guy. But it's also, Real, like, I mean. I don't it, think so though. Goon's different. Goon's definitely different, like, um, although I do play an idiot. But the truth is, like, when I started off and I would get, you know, things offered to me and comedies and stuff, like, I, I, I would, most of the part, I, most of the time I would get offered, like, the kind of wild guys. Mm -hmm. They're so much more fun to play. Yeah. I can't really, and I also don't see myself playing, like, the boring kind of straight guy. Right. It's like, I want to play the guy who can say anything he wants and kind of get away with it and try to find a way to make him lovable, you know? So I, I don't know if I've really, maybe I've, I've typecast myself because those are the kind of characters right. that I would prefer to play if, you, if I was going to do a comedy. The but, wacky dude. Yeah, because I'm a weirdo. Ashton Kutcher said recently that there was a Dude, Where's My Car 2 I script, this. which I feel like he maybe just made that up. No, but. he didn't. I actually, <laughs> I had heard about it like a while ago. Um... It's just that I'm hearing about it more. Uh, but I remember thinking, I love Ashton. Like, I haven't seen him in so long. Mm -hmm. And I had so much fun working with him. And, like, it would be so fun to work with him again. I, I don't remember anything about the movie, though. I don't remember. I haven't seen that movie in so long. But the title, Seriously, Dude, Where's My Car? Like, I have to call my agent and say, like, dude, is there a script out there? Because if it was weird and dark... Um, be, might be funny. Yeah. Dude, Where's My Car was like one of my favorite movies. Really? Yeah. I watched it like... Well, now every... we have to do a sequel. Dude, I watched it like every day. No, you don't. I did. I did. Guess what I do? I have it on a loop. Constantly in your, in your house? I actually have seven TVs in each room with a loop. Or of, just like a different, seven different movies a different that movie I've done in each one. You're like, oh, let me go in the old school room. Let yeah, me go I in the Jay and Silent yep. Bob room. Just watch all my stuff like... 
<laughs> Goon, last of the enforcers, out September 1st. Go check it out. It's very funny. I like to burn on the first. Same. Hot take. I don't really have my movies on a loop. No, I, I don't I, no. do that. Cut. He, he, he that definitely does. That would be really weird. <laughs> he definitely does.